Hello and welcome to afternoon stream on Monday. We had the morning kickoff stream for this hackathon and it's time for afternoon one. So, yeah, I'm still Kim Hedberg and I'm, and and I'm still Goran Vukšić. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you all again. So, <clears throat> climate hackathon. It will uh, run this week from Monday to, to Friday. And uh, what's unique about it, it is dedicated to, uh, to climate. And we have uh, all challenges submitted by non-profit and non-governmental organizations. So those are the real cases you are working on. And hopefully, until end of week, we will see some great solutions. This is a hackathon for good. Solutions should be submitted as open source to try to solve these challenges and maybe help out some other uh, NGOs out there. Uh, yeah, we have daily streams and daily streams will continue every day at 5 p.m. Uh, until Friday. And then on Sunday at 5 p.m. is a winner announcement. So, <clears throat> Yeah, we're doing this together with Microsoft. So the event is, is uh, organized and hosted by us at Stratitech together with uh, Microsoft. And we have our great partners and sponsors. Uh, Ember, uh, an independent climate and energy think tank focused on accelerating the global electricity transition. Subak, an accelerator and data cooperative for climate nonprofits. And Startup Wise Guys. They are mentorship-driven accelerator program for early stage startups, providing seed capital, office space, and mentorship. We also have our hackathon partners, and those are Copenhagen Capacity, Tech Barbecue, Impactor, EarthHacks, WonderCoders, Food Cafe, Azure Skone, Nordic Women in Tech Awards. Don't forget to use the hashtag when you are posting on social media. We would like to see the teams that work on our solution. We would like to see what's going on, not just wait here in the dark until Friday when you come up with those awesome solutions. We want to know what's going on. You've been active through the day on the Discord, as we've seen, and we hosted a small uh, coffee session together with uh, Sherry from Microsoft uh, where we spoke with a few participants and we will try to do the same through the week at random times to catch up with participants to hear what they, what they work on. And today on the social media there was not much activity. Some of you shared the personal banners which are still available if you would like one. So we got one team picture over here, and they are working on the climate policy radar challenge. So yeah, we also wish them all the best of luck yeah. in, in this. It's Zukle? Zukle? Zil Zilke, I think. Zilke okay. group. Yeah. You probably know to pronounce it better <laughs> than me. OK, <clears throat> as you probably know so far, Hackathon is run on the dev post platform or there all team members should register not only the team lead so all team members there you will be creating the project and you need to add the team members to to that project to for them to be visible teams should be three to six members if you have less members try to reach out to some people on discord and looking for team channel if you have more than six you can split in two teams maybe as a obvious solution right and uh, yeah there was a lot of uh, a lot of going on on looking for teams today uh, please note that we have participants from 44 countries and a lot of them is from US so we expect them to tune in now in the our afternoon right and to become active so take your time to find the teams if you, if you are a team leader, post what kind of skills you need in your team. If you're looking for a team, post what skills you have and uh, what can you contribute with or what challenge you would like to work on and uh, so on. This is a great opportunity to connect with people, 
to work with people on different continents and such. So, <clears throat> uh, is there anything else about DevPost? Well, I don't think so. All the challenges are there. All the challenges are yeah. there. After the morning stream, we posted uh, all additional uh, information we had for those challenges. There are some uh, questions regarding uh, clarification of some data and such. We will reach out to NGOs uh, these days and try to get uh, answers on that. Uh, we will host in afternoon streams the NGO. They will be joining the program. So this is also your opportunity to ask some questions uh, live. And uh, today we will have two NGOs, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. We're meeting with uh, Ember Sebek and with um, Cool Farm Alliance. Yeah, so they will be able to answer your questions uh, today in this stream. Uh, yeah, that's it. Check out the post. A lot of information there, a lot of important information. Decide which challenge you want to work on, find teammates, prepare your solution until end of week. So where do they post questions if they want to ask questions to the uh, NGOs that are joining today? They can post on Discord and we will get... Uh, we, will, we are monitoring Discord uh, now, so if you have some questions, feel free to prepare them post them during the chat or uh, yeah or okay. even now and we will be we will be asking those uh, questions uh, cool so we have our discord that we mentioned several times and i need to mention it again <coughs> just for the people who are joining in now in the afternoon to be sure what is there we have text and voice channels Text channels, general, all important information is there. When it's daily stream, we post uh, notification with a link in advance, also notifying you. All main uh, info is posted there. If you have some questions, you can post in challenges. We will try to get back to you as soon as possible we can. There is already a lot of information about challenges and a lot of data, so try to figure out how to use it in the best possible way. Introduction channel is to introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, let us know where are you from out of those 44 countries we, we have uh, <coughs> participating, uh, what you are doing, maybe why are you joining this, this uh, challenge and such. We have looking for team, I mentioned it already, pause there to find team members or to to find some team that you can work with. As you notice through the day in mentors channel, our mentors were, were joining and uh, saying they were available. They have different technical skills and business uh, skills also. So you can uh, chat with them, validate your idea, uh, try to, they will try to build on top of it and uh, give you some advice how this could be used and such. Uh, even though I said they have business uh, skills, this is Hackathon for Good, so we are not expecting you to submit uh, business plans and such. We want to see solutions, how they can help this world and help the climate change and help these NGOs in the end, non-governmental organizations. So selfie is to share photos of your team. Please do on social media here, let us know what is going on, what you are doing, how you are hacking together and working together remotely. Um, and we have voice channels. Uh, general chat with other hackathon participants. This is where we popped in at, uh, I think it was 2 p.m. today to, to have a quick chat with some participants and it was great to meet you there. And uh, we also have uh, different meeting rooms that are marked with this uh, animal emojis and the number. So you can easily connect with people in uh, dog room number one. And um, yeah, we have um, some other also mouse number 12 or <laughs> such. <laughs> but it's easier to say like, uh, yeah, instead of just saying the number also having uh, having uh, yeah uh, okay so we spoke about 
Ember and uh, Subak. Earlier today when we introduced the challenge and we <coughs> played a short video where the challenge was introduced. I don't know, is our guest already online? Should be, we are a few minutes early maybe with the chat, but we can check. <laughs> but we have Sherry. Sherry. Hello, Sherry. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm so excited to see all the engagement happening in the chat. And uh, that's so great to see everybody's busy. Yeah, it's it's awesome. So how you been spending day? I've seen also you were replying to messages and helping out with Azure passes. Are those uh, still available for participants? Yes, they are. Um, um, I have, but I have actually, since most of people are going to watch this one, I want to give a few tips on, on that yeah. one because there were, there were some questions about those passes. One is that these passes, the, the best is to, to create a total new subscription with a, with a new email address. Uh, and then try to activate it like that because otherwise it might get confused if you uh, confusing if you already have pay as you go service you're not sure that if it's going to use your actual credit or not and the answer is that if you create a new um, totally um, um, uh, what do you call it that if you create uh, some services and use this subscription, of course, it is not going to cost you if this credit is, is over. It's going to be 120 US dollar. I'm pretty sure it's going to be enough for the entire hackathon. There, no, there, there won't be any uh, worries about that. Uh, but the safest part is that if you're not sure, you better just create a dummy account for this account, for this hackathon and then use this uh, Azure passes for that. Also, uh, since we are not sure that um, uh, how, um, because this, this uh, passes are limited, uh, the limited number of them we have it. So we decided to give actually for uh, one of these passes per each team. So when you totally form your team, one of you can be in charge of these services and you can fill out the form. I'm going to uh, pass this one to them. And I can see Chris is here. Hi, Chris. Hello, Chris. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Welcome. Hi there. How are you doing? Can you hear me all right? Yes, yes. we yes. can hear you. So how have you been spending your afternoon? On the chat as well with the, with the developers? No. <laughs> no. Um, in my own uh, little world of data, yes, <laughs> but uh, on different, different challenges. Yeah. Great. So welcome to the studio. We uh, played this morning your intro video about the challenge. I guess there are some uh, people already working on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seems that way. Uh, we have uh, we pulled quick statistics. We have over 300 uh, registered members from 44 different countries, which is really interesting. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, my colleague Kim, she prepared some <laughs> questions for you, like to clarify more. And uh, I will also monitor the, the live, uh, live chat uh, to, to see what's going on there. Just for your info that we haven't told you before joining, you have backstage view. So the full studio view is a bit different <laughs> than, than seeing, uh, seeing it from your angle at the moment. But that's the, yeah. Uh, so, Kim. Yeah, I was I was looking into your web page to find out more, and your challenge um, is about tracking super emitters of methane, methane ga gas, right? So that's a challenge that they are hacking. So I was a bit curious about because I could understand that you can, if you report leakages and so on, that that's fine. But how could you otherwise detect if there has been a methane gas le leakage somewhere? Is it visible, or how, how would you find out? It is visible in, um, in infrared imagery, yeah. yes, that's captured by satellites. So, so you're right, it's very hard to detect at the ground level uh, unless you have pretty direct access to the locations where it's happening. But um, as I mentioned in the, uh, in the intro, it's happening from 
uh, fossil fuel infrastructure primarily. So that's that's coal mines, uh, oil pipelines, gas pipelines, et cetera. So obviously that data is very closely guarded by the industry. Um, yeah. but what, what we've seen in recent years, which is very exciting, is a, a kind of an expansion of satellite imagery and satellite data that's tracking, uh, that's imaging the whole the whole world um, in these in these kind of wavelengths that you can see methane in, and it's becoming more and more accessible to uh, the everyday person. So we're seeing quite an exciting opening up of um, this information. Yeah, and this will of course be very valuable for the for the hackers uh, to be able to use that data. I'm assuming. Because uh, I would guess that companies are, um, are not that keen on always reporting. Is that the case? Or are they actually really working with authorities to, to sort of uh, try to, to, um, to lower the emissions? Well, that's a good question. Regulation is coming, but it's slow. Currently, the best efforts to, to track methane are, are funded by the industry themselves, which on the one hand is good because it shows some movement. But on the other hand, there's obviously no incentive to release that information. Uh, so we, we still have a very poor understanding of of who the worst offenders are and, and exactly where this is happening and why. So uh, the information is not in the public realm and uh, it won't be for a few years. So there are there are some NGOs and nonprofits who have actually who are actually launching their own satellites very very excitingly, but that's a few years away. So for now we just have the um, the public data that's been uh, captured by the likes of the European Space Agency and uh, other existing satellites, and and it, it is it is possible. So there have been research projects previously that have used this open data to um, identify leaks and sources, but as, as I said, that's mostly been um, either with the intention of commercialising that and selling it to the fossil fuel industry, or or, or indeed paid for by the industry themselves. So this this hasn't been done. Um, with a, with a view to making the information open. Yeah. So could you tell us a bit more about the leakages? I mean, um, what can you actually do to reduce it or make sure that you don't have it? Because if I understand it correctly, sometimes you're actually letting out the methane gas uh, because you want to, basically, right? Yeah, it's quite bizarre. So there is, um, it's literally valuable, a valuable asset that's being vented for free into the atmosphere. So it's it's nonsensical on a few different levels. Obviously, it has a, a a bad climate impact, but also it doesn't make economic sense for the companies who are doing it. I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing uh, increased interest um, from the industry themselves. But there's there's obviously something needs to be done much more urgently than that to to actually, from a climate point of view, to be to, be, to stop these leaks, to stop the, uh, the warming effect. So, um, what can be done? I think the first step from um, and the strategy here is to identify the sources and it would be amazing if we could then move on to attributing the sources. So not only detecting a leak or an event um, or kind of a super emitter event, like I said in the uh, in the description, but if we can then move on to, um, I mean, that would be great in itself, obviously, but then if we could then even move on to attributing it to certain infrastructure, then we get into a, a place where we can go into accountability and starts identifying who these who the um, who the worst offenders are. Yeah, is this is this a lot about infrastructure as well? I could assume that maybe if you have an older type of mining technology and so on, that you might be in a situation where this happens more often than if you have a more modern technology. I think aging infrastructure is an issue here. Yes, absolutely. Um, some of the work that has been done has shown that. Uh, a lot of a lot of um, the most significant flares and events have come from from aging pipelines that are spreading across countries like Russia and um, uh, that kind of the, the Eurasian landmass. Also in the U.S. Um, it, around the fracking regions in in the Permian Basin, there's a lot of activity there as well. Um, but the technology exists to to mitigate these. So um, one example. Is from coal mines. So actually, coal mines, particularly deep coal mines, are responsible for around a third of these methane methane emissions from the fossil fuel industry. And, and there, there are technologies that exist to to prevent that from happening. So currently, they're just not companies are not required to make that investment. Okay, but if I understand you correctly, there's actually value in in the methane gas if you can actually you know capture it correctly. What kind of value are we speaking about? So our analysis of um, 
the issue when it comes to coal mines, which I've, I just said is, is around about a third of the emissions that we're talking about here. Our analysis there is that a pretty large fraction of this can be captured in an economic way. So the, the money you'd have to spend to 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 effectively install the equipment necessary would, would be cheaper than uh, the return you could make on the, on can then being able to sell that gas. So, so there is um, quite a, I can't remember the exact number, but I, I, I think it's more than I think it's more than half, or a significant fraction of this gas could be captured and sold to, to a profit. Yeah. So it sounds like there is an incentive to to start doing something about it at least. So what would you expect if if we can actually reduce the leakages? What would be the sort of the main impact on on the climate um, effects? Well, it would it would be huge. So as I said. Um, uh, methane is an incredibly strong greenhouse gas, particularly over short time scales, and 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 regulation is really slow. So proper regulation in the in the European Union is is probably a few years away, and um, for the rest of the world, even further away. So um, it's really some it's really um, methane emissions are kind of happening in in the dark. We are very very kind of poor understanding, but it's a very strong greenhouse gas. And I, I see it as a real blind spot in our kind of accounting of greenhouse gases. Um, so, so yeah, I think some action is needed pretty quickly. Yeah. Goran, do we have any questions from our teams? Yes, we do. So we have a question regarding oil production sites. Um, is there some data available like oil fields and fracking locations, something like that, like um, Yes, yes. So the best source for this would be the brilliant work done by a group called Global Energy. They have provided uh, open maps and with a very comprehensive uh, kind of supporting wiki pages, giving all sorts of details about locations. So they have a, a global worldwide fossil fuel infrastructure tracker. I think it's called the Fossil Fuel Infrastructure Tracker. And who uh, was it has, by? Yeah, because as I said. There was a hack. It was hacking just when you said the name of the or of the organization. Who was it providing the data? That's Global Energy Monitor. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, great. Do we have any other questions? No other questions. So no. thank you very much for joining us and clarifying this a bit more. If teams uh, come up with some questions, we will uh, email them to you, contact you. So we can get uh, some additional info about that. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Really happy to help. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah. Bye bye for now. Bye. Bye. OK, so Sherry. <laughs> Hello again. Hello again. Yeah. Uh, interesting challenge, right? Yes, it is. And, and it, I was actually looking at the URL that uh, Chris just mentioned, this Global Energy Monitor. Uh, it's actually pretty uh, interesting. Maybe website with all the information. Maybe you could post it in Discord in our yeah, I was, I challenges. Yeah, I was doing that actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so others find it uh, useful also. Um, yeah, uh, regarding questions and such, please use Discord. It's much easier than to switch between multiple chats. Uh, the comments stayed uh, open on the live session, but it's oh, okay. it's fine. Regarding, uh, in these daily sessions, we will reply to questions regarding the current challenges we talk about. So for other things, use challenges channel and we will get back to you or you can join some other daily stream uh, with uh, with uh, other participants. And uh, for for uh, other streams, today we have uh, Cool Farm Tool joining yep. in a few cool minutes. Farm Alliance, yeah. uh, sorry, Cool Farm Alliance. Yep. And uh, uh, we have tomorrow? And uh, tomorrow, exactly. Tomorrow we will have <clears throat> uh, Sam Schiller and uh, Mitcha for, from Buy Food with Plastic. So there was a question regarding Buy Food with Plastic on the live stream. You can ask that 
tomorrow. We will uh, we will try get uh, to get back to you uh, regarding that. So we will post the schedule also on the also on the teams to to let you know what uh, who's coming up. Yeah, right. Exactly. So tomorrow, buy food with plastic and Hudson Carbon presenting. <clears throat> In more details, their their challenges. Uh, until we wait for the next guest to join, uh, Sherry, what are those badgers about that are all over your place? I can see uh, behind you on the sofa. Even one is there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so this is a program called Azure Heroes. And um, it's like a community program that we are running from Microsoft. Oh, I guess we have uh, Richard here. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we can talk to Richard and then we talk about the badger later. Let's yeah, do sure. That. <laughs> Hi, Richard. So, hello, Richard. Hi. Hello. How are we all doing? I don't know who's on the call, but hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Just first thing, <clears throat> we haven't wrote something in mail. You have a backstage view, so cameras are uh, having uh, actually different different angles. The way you see us is the backstage view, but that's fine for you to know. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so welcome. Uh, we prepared some questions, and probably teams will uh, have some questions also regarding your uh, challenge. So we wanted to have this quick uh, quick chat just to hear a bit more. Uh, this morning in welcome stream, we played your video and uh, to, to explain the challenge. And uh, yeah, uh, we don't have an overview who is working on which challenge at the moment. But what we do know is there is over 300 and uh, 60 participants from 44 different countries. So it's pretty interesting. There was a lot of activities today. Yeah. yeah. So my colleague Kim will yeah, ask I was, you some. I was looking at your web page uh, to find out a bit more about Cool Farmer Alliance. And, and I was actually considering there's a lot of things you need to know as a farmer. So which areas do you need to sort of cover or think about if you want to have a sustainable farmer or be a sustainable farming or be work with sustainable farming in that sense? So there's, there's layers of depth within this, but, but the top line answer is going to be water quality, soil health, climate emissions and biodiversity. That's kind of a lot. <laughs> so how, how much yes. of that can you actually affect? I'm thinking about it's one thing if you're a farmer in a, in a Western country and it's obviously something else if you're in a rural India or whatever it could be or in Africa and so on. So what, what can we expect from a farmer to actually be able to do to, to be more sustainable? Good question. I, so a, a farmer is able to influence a lot. So um, and if we take one, if we took biodiversity, for instance, they can choose how much of a sort of monoculture they create on their farm or how much space they create for nature to have a place. So they can leave margins for uh, wildlife to grow. They can leave stands of trees or woodland or forest. Um, they can create water habitats, um, sort of small scale micro habitats as well as larger scale habitats. And they're looking to create multiple different habitats um, to afford as much variety in the different species that can thrive on the land and on the farm. Um, what we see a lot, well, um, historically is, you know, big, vast, the creation of very big, vast monoculture farms that are tens of thousands of hectares, of just the same crop. And the trouble with that is, it allows disease and parasites to thrive and flush through the whole thing, and it gives no space for other uh, species to thrive. And what we see in things like um, agroforestry and silver pastoral systems, where there is disruption to open space, where there's trees and there's hedge breaks, um, they create physical barriers for disease pathology to spread, and it also creates habitats for other uh, species to thrive. So all of that's kind of to an extent within the farmer's power of control. Um, 
the challenge can come access to capital, access to funding to help pay for changes uh, and the like. But but mostly it's within the control of the funder. Yeah, I'm I'm assuming this is sort of a, a matter of education and knowledge as well. And you provide a to uh, tool, and uh, the Cool Farm tool. Uh, so what what kind of help can you get there? So the Cool Farm tool works as um, a decision support tool for farmers. So it asks for input data to capture the practices and processes that are going on on farm. And from that, it will model and calculate what your greenhouse gas emissions are. Um, it will also look at, uh, depending on the metrics you complete, also look at water impact, food loss and waste, and biodiversity. Um, and from that, you can then run scenarios to say, well, what if I change sort of my inputs? What if I change my fertilizer applications or my pest control applications? What if I change my tillage practices or if I plant in some new trees? It can start modeling the effects of those decisions. And so the farmer, having completed that, can have conversations with their local agronomists or advisors or other farmers, and they can start you know, changing their practices on farm um, towards having a lower impact uh, on the farm. The other side that the Cool Farm tool is able to use is through the supply chain. So uh, many of the members uh, of the Cool Farm Alliance are organizations further up the supply chain. So they might be retailers or food producers. And there's a lot of pressure on them at the moment under science-based targets to uh, have transparency and measure and monitor and report against their what's called scope three supply chain, which is their, their upstream supply chain. Um, which goes into agriculture if they're food and beverage companies. So what they can do is they can use the Cool Farm tool to report the farm emissions that are feeding their supply chain. So the, a farmer in the Cool Farm tool is able to share their assessment and pass it up to the next tier in the supply chain. And so a Walmart, for instance, could receive um, the assessments from their farmers um, providing them with their GHG emissions from the farms that are supplying Walmart with their um, crop products. Yeah. I could imagine that's important information for consumers as well as we become more and more aware and interested in, in where, our, what, where our food actually comes from. I think yeah, we have absolutely. a question in the, in the stream, right? We have several questions from our uh, <clears throat> hackathon participants. Uh, can we use proprietary API to power the app and retrieve data? Uh, yes, um, so there are APIs, well, I say yes, right, so there are APIs into the Cool Farm tool, particularly for um, crop GHG assessments and also um, uh, be, uh, dairy API assessments for the dairy uh, industry as well. The challenge we have is um, the APIs are sort of uh, part of being a member of the Cool Farm Alliance. Uh, you can access the APIs. Um, so from a developmental perspective for the hackathon, I think it might be slightly more of a challenge. There is the API um, instructions. I'm, I'm non-technical, so yeah. please excuse me for it's fine, all you it's technical fine. developers out there. Um, on the Cool Farm <laughs> tool, anyone can register for the Cool Farm tool and they can complete five free assessments. Yeah. So you know, any, any of the developers will be able to do that. And on the Cool Farm Tool website, there's a little question mark icon. And in there, the bottom of that page is the uh, instructions and details for the APIs. Um, okay. Perfect. And then if you are needing API access, uh, then I think the thing to say is get in touch. Um, OK. That's probably the easiest way around that. Perfect, okay, thanks. if there will be like uh, some need to, to explain something uh, deeply, we will uh, reach out like via the mail. Another question we have is, uh, which geographical area is more interesting for you? So the Cool Farm tool is currently used in a over 140 countries around the world, uh, which is great. We are truly global. Um, I think the predominant use of the tool is currently in Europe, North America and South America, um, so and, and within there across the European community uh, is the biggest use. But over half of our users are all in Europe, so that would be the area. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Great. Um, 
Are you interested in the application returning CO2 estimations made directly from satellite images? If, well, it'll be, yes, that would be very interesting. Um, I would be interested to know how accurate they are because they won't take into account, well, they've less, I mean, they may do, but I'll be surprised if they can take into account the CO2 sequestration and cycling within the soil. Okay. So it will probably only be a number that reflects part of the story. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. But if they've got the answer to that, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> from, from, from remote sensing, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's, let's see where these questions lead. Like, uh, at, the end of, at the end of week, I'm pretty sure we'll see some interesting solutions uh, popping up. Um, yeah, let's give more? participants some. Do you have some? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. if if we yeah you were saying already that the tool is used globally and so on, um, but what kind of impact are you expecting? What how much impact can it actually make if 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 you have even more uses and so on? What can we expect on the? What kind of impact could it actually have on on the climate if we can make farmers uh, work more sustainable? Uh, significant. So agriculture, uh, depending on sort of which factors you look at, is sort of any, anywhere sort of between 15, 20, 25 percent of global emissions. Uh, that also takes into account land use change, um, particularly deforestation um, in, in places around the world. So um, if we could cease deforestation and start re reforestation again, so, you know, replanting trees that have been lost over the last sort of 50 years, um, then that coupled with soil and the sequestration, so the storage of carbon within the soil, as well as in the biomass of trees, has the potential to completely offset all of agriculture and start making a positive contribution to the other industries that may be struggling to make reductions. Um, part of the challenge, though, is soil does have a finite carrying capacity for carbon. So if you're in a very carbon rich soil already, such as peat, it doesn't it doesn't sequester much more soil. The, the issues with things like peat is to protect it, to stop it from losing that carbon. Yeah. Um, but a combination of sequestration, both in biomass and in soils, is, is absolutely key and can fundamentally transport agriculture from being one of the causes of climate change to being one of the solutions to climate change. Yeah. That's cool. Nice. So Europe, North America, South America. What about Asia? Uh, so Asia, with this last year, we've seen quite a lot of growth in the use and the uptake of the tool in China. Um, and it, it, it is a bit massive opportunity. It's just not one that we have um, really stepped into as a tool and as an alliance. We, most of our members and the, and the food supply chains we work with are um, more European and US or um, North and South America based. Um, but yeah, we've seen about a sort of 10% uh, 10 of total numbers growth in, uh, in Asia. Um, and also the Cool Farm Alliance is part of the South Asian Nitrogen Hub, um, which is looking at the nitrogen cycles in South Asia, which includes nitrous oxide from agriculture. Um, so there is there's a growing interest um, within the Asian communities to, to address this. And um, yeah, the Cool Farm tool can be used there. So if any of the, any of these teams are um, working in Asia, then great. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. So what, what is, what is because uh, I, I hear that this is a great tool, what is prohibiting farmers from using it? What, what, what is needed for you to, to make it spread even more? Um, I think, so the Cool Farm tool is in 13 languages at the moment, but that was sponsored by sort of a European funded project. And so they're mostly European languages. Um, so I think local language translations is one barrier. Um, another one is, you know, it's a web, it's a web app uh, tool. Um, so having, you know, internet connectivity, of, you know, from a PC um, is, is one of the limitations. Um, so I think some of the other opportunities that there may be if people want to go off piece from the original brief is a mobile app um, would be awesome and something we're kind of we're thinking about in the longer term of our development pipeline. But, um, but I'm also aware in some parts of the world, you know, uh, even mobile data is 
can be a restriction. So it's how can how can a mobile app be you know not on a smartphone? Um, and, um, you know, minimize the amount of data transfer that's actually needed from people's, yeah. you know, mobile plans. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Do you have any more questions? Uh, right no now? more questions at the, at the moment, but since we are running Hackathon in all time zones, <laughs> maybe they appear. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, so we will reach out if there will be something specific which we are not able to to uh, answer but thank you very much for joining us live and uh, yeah the, we will see what uh, great solutions come up uh, hackers with until end of week yeah thank you very much look forward to seeing it all thank, yeah. you. thank you thanks thank you. bye 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 bye, thank bye. You. bye. So back to you Sherry you were saying something about badgers Yes, but first of all, I was uh, um, I was listening to um, to all these two NGOs and uh, uh, and uh, and then checking out all their website and so on. Um, it is uh, it is so interesting that I'm learning a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. isn't it? The, the, the fact is that uh, I keep saying that yeah, this is a topic uh, very close to my heart, and I feel like that I have a lot of knowledge about it. And then by listening to all of these NGOs, I see that actually my knowledge is so limited, and there are a lot of things we can do, and which is very exciting and brings a lot of opportunities for yeah. all of us. Yeah, definitely. We can save the world one line of code at a time, right? So that's what we are trying to do. But something for sure technology can do about all this. Yeah. All but this I, I agree things. with you, uh, Sherry. I think it's it's one of the most fun stuff with, with hackathons is that you actually get to deep dive into an area which you might not at all be able to have any knowledge of before. But if you take all what you know from other parts, then you can suddenly apply it on a different area. And it's really fascinating what can come up then. Yeah, yeah exactly. And um, back to the badger. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so this um, badger, uh, the name is actually also badger, um, very creative. Um, so it comes from Azure Heroes uh, program that we have at Microsoft. And uh, which always I um, I actually I, I say that it's like a, a token of appreciation from Microsoft to the developer communities for using our technology, learning our technology, and then somehow going one step farther for uh, for actually uh, helping others to grow and make sure that we have a uh, we have a, a inclusive communities and and also. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of multiple different badgers that you can look for if you go to aka.ms slash azure.heroes. I will put it in the chat, Gora, before you mention it. Um, <laughs> so you can, <laughs> and by the way, our website just been updated. So if you just go and check it out, you will be one of the very first few people that you see the new look of the website and new nice. uh, badges that, yes. So we have multiple different type of badgers and there are criteria that you can go and look at this and, and see that uh, which of these badgers you can you can claim. Uh, you can nominate yourself or you can or you can uh, for example you have a friend that you in the community that you know that that person is doing a lot, for example, is always mentoring other people. And you can also be the one and say that thank you to that person by going and nominating that person. And then you can uh, then you can actually give this badger from your site to the people. So it's a token of appreciation and it's a totally like a thank you note to all of you. And as a participant of uh, this hackathon, all of you, you are going to actually build some code which is uh, the criteria for getting a builder badge. So all of you, you will be by the end of the week, you will be uh, eligible to get one of these builder badges. And, uh, and then the one that going to be the winner of the hackathon uh, are going to be uh, eligible to get the maker badger. Nice. And uh, and then all of these badgers, we have a limited limited number of these different badgers. And then how rare is the badger? It actually defines the value. And uh, guess what? 
Um, the most valuable badger that we have is a green contributor. And who is the green contributor? Um, we all know that uh, sustainable software development is a very new topic. And we, um, nobody actually still so far know the, the, the total definition of what does it mean to be a green uh, software, uh, software development. Uh, and one of the streams, we are going to have a good colleague of mine, Asim, that is going to talk more about this topic. But um, but for now, all of us, we are actually into this together. <laughs> we are discovering and to find out how is the best way to, to develop this application to have the limited uh, carbon footprint. And those people that they share their knowledge with the community are eligible to get these, these badgers as well. And after that, it is the inclusive leader, because that is also another uh, another area that we all are working on that, which is to make sure our community is diverse and inclusive and everybody is uh, totally feels like having a voice. And so on. I can talk about this uh, project forever, Goran, you know that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> seems like it, sorry. <laughs> so, but... so if I'm not coding, can I ever get a badge, badger? Uh, this is totally a program for the developers. So. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> That's too bad. Yeah. But I heard about, there's something like no code or low code, right? Would yeah. that be eligible as well? Or Maybe I can start with that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Kim, uh, do you know that who has the highest number of these badges so far? Could it, could it be my colleague next to me? <laughs> yeah, I can imagine yeah. that. <laughs> so how many, how many do you have? To be honest, not sure. 14, I think, was the 14 number. 14 or 14? Uh, 14. 14. <laughs> oh, my God. So you have a room with shelves at home with all the badgers? Not, not like that. They are digital. So oh, okay. I have application and they are inside. So yeah. yeah. That's, uh... But it's cuter to have them like that. Yeah, that's that's cute. Yeah. Yeah. I have one like that. That was some su surprise. You can package. you can uh, you can earn more go run. So go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that sounds good. Nice, awesome. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, are we ending? Yeah, we're reaching the end, right, for tonight as well. Yeah, uh, there is no questions at the moment, and um, we had actually a lot of questions, and, and that was good. We will follow up uh, tomorrow with uh, buy food with plastic, and we said now I Hudson, Hudson carb, carb. Hudson carbon, <laughs> right? <laughs> Not to look into the notes again. So yeah. Uh, Feel free to prepare your questions uh, for tomorrow for them and uh, we will uh, give our best to ask them or if you have some more questions about other challenges we will try to reach out to, to those NGOs and answer those questions as soon as uh, possible. But uh, don't uh, take this as a blocker, try to build solution time is slowly passing by, you still have time to form a team prepare everything until Friday, but start working on, on that solution, figure out, okay, how this solution can benefit, not just that NGO, but the whole world and uh, try to explain your idea. Until Friday, you should be able to make a nice three minute video explaining, okay, how the world benefits from this. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so you're a veteran, so I'm thinking, what, what, is, what would you do? How would you structure five, because five days is quite a lot still. Yeah. How do you make sure that you use the time the best? I think depends on, yeah, depends on team and the uh, skills that the uh, team uh, has. It's uh, best always to have diversity of skills. And then you figure out, okay, who can do what? Who will focus on video? Who will focus on presentation? Who will do some... Uh, front-end coding, back-end coding, maybe some designer will be in team to make everything look nice. Uh, and who posts yeah. on social medias, right? Because yeah, that's important Yeah, don't as forget well. to yeah. post on social media we because... Because otherwise we don't know what's going on, right? Yeah, we and want we to want know. you to use hack the climate hashtag. Yeah. yeah, exactly. 
And uh, yeah, that's the one. So thank you, Sherry. She left quickly. And <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, she's there. I'm here. Ah, I'm here. you're there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, can I also give a final uh, tips to people? Sure. Absolutely. Go ahead. So, one thing is that please don't feel shy or be a stranger. Whenever you have a question, reach out, type your question. You want to reach out directly to us, do that. And don't forget that we have mentors and they are also there to help you. So, so ask, don't be shy at all. We are all here to support you and help you. Yeah, that's a very good tip. Yeah. So I don't think we'll come up with anything more greater to say than that. So let's, yeah. <laughs> let's be the last quote of the day. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. And, and uh, uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah. And see, see you on you. Discord. Bye -bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay, yeah, that's it for today. We repeated some information, gave some tips. Uh, register on uh, hacktheclimate.devpost.com, uh, register on Discord, uh, post with uh, hashtag, reach out with questions, and uh, we see each other tomorrow at 5 p.m. Are you going to dream about Hack the Climate tonight? Yeah, probably. <laughs> like... Um, like yeah. you've been doing for weeks now, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Took some time to prepare it yeah. and some effort. But yeah, we are here. So let's let's hack for good. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So see you tomorrow. Thank Bye. you. Bye.